When it comes to Sasquatch, there's an elite few um, in the North State who've had real contact. Direct contact, no. The closest I've ever come to being any part of it is when mom and dad lived up on the hill in Mount Shasta. Yeah. The, the dogs acted up one one day, middle of the day. And then we, we smelled this bad smell. Couldn't, couldn't distinguish what it was. We've smelled bear before, and there wasn't a bear smell. It was a different smell. Never visually seen anything. Um, and then heard later reports that the uh, some of the guys that were up on the mountain um, in a logging operation had seen something. And we related it to about the same time, the same area or close to the same area. There was a possibility. I'm not saying there isn't. Um, and being with that being said, because I've never seen anything personally myself. And I'm one of the person that he said, somebody says there is something, I want to see it. Yeah, and I'll say there's something. Um, so that's what I'm going to say. I'm not saying there isn't. I will say that what I believe is this universe cannot be so small and in insignificant that we can't have something that doesn't belong to us. You know, if you want to call it an alien, if you want to call it a Sasquatch, if you want to call it whatever, you know, there's got to be, we can't be the only thing here. Kind of hard to believe. <laughs> Yeah. And I think, you know, when it, it comes to, I guess the, the word is cryptozoology, um, things like Bigfoot, Sasquatch, there's always been the problem of, well, where's the remains? And, you know, Gigantopithecus in a different part of the world may be suggestive, but it, it's not like it's in the Pacific Northwest. We're finding a bunch of remains. Right. Um, you know, and I think that's always been a trouble. And I forget where I heard this may have been on a 80s documentary or well 90s probably because they started getting more interesting in the 90s mm -hmm. but um there's a certain numerical threshold i think that they're like if bigfoot is here then there has to be more than this amount for us to see you know to have visual encounter when there has to be um you know, so if it's above that range, we would be seeing more. So it's got to be fewer than maybe 200 or something like that. If it was lower than that, it may not be able to breed, like you were saying at the beginning, for, for feral animals or for animals to become wild. You know, they have to have a mating population and they have to right. have access. So one thing that gets lost in the conversation around Bigfoot and Sasquatch, and I, I you hit it perfectly on the head, is we may be filling in the blanks with our own thoughts or with people's descriptions of things. And then there's hoaxers that go out there and they try and make a hoax of something. But the reality is, you know what bear smells like, right? You know that certain things can elicit the same response, you know, in the, in the dogs um, that a bear could, right? And you know, you encountered something that is, it is awkward. It's odd. It's irregular. It like it doesn't fit within any of the things we know, and it matches with other encounters that the loggers or you know other people have in certain times. And so, with a, I mean, this is especially important for me, you know, as a researcher because a lot of what I do intersects with the, uh, mythology, right? And how people remember what they experience and what they encounter, and sometimes they explain it in a way that it takes on its own story, its own mythology. And then people, they do things based on the story, not on the actual encounter. And so something odd happened and something odd, you know, generated an event. And those oddities happen in a specific region. Yeah, there's copycats in Colorado and Maine and Florida. Come on, Bigfoot in Florida, forget about it. This is a this is mostly centered in, and sorry for those of you who, I don't know, call them Chupacabra or whatever is over there. But <laughs> in the Pacific Northwest, we do have a tradition that, you know, is uh, attested by Native Americans and uh, the S European settlers, right? And so Sasquatch right. or Bigfoot, call it whatever you want. Maybe a large part of that is the mythological element. And right. that, you know, we're filling in the blanks. Uh, the other end, though, is, well, people are in this part of the world, in the Pacific Northwest, certain things happen. Those certain things happening 
um, <clears throat> being unique to that region, or at least unique enough until it, the news is on other places and people can, you know, hoax it somewhere else. It it aligns with you know experience and maybe some of that is visual. Like these days, we have everyone's got a camera on them, right? You got a telephone, you got a camera, <laughs> pretty much. Right. Uh, you've got a video camera and there's opportunity to, um, well, we have, uh, you know, we have trail cams too, you know, we've got hunting cam, we've got like all sorts of things to, to put out in the wilderness, you know, to help us along the way. So we have the tools to maybe narrow that down. And I think, um, you know, our contribution to this conversation um, is, there are real things that happen in the Pacific Northwest and there's right. stuff we don't know. Right. And that's real. Like, and take it or leave it, you know, um, maybe someone aligns it with something they thought they saw. Maybe someone at a different point confused a bear. Like it was a, maybe, a, a, I don't know. What do you call them? A, a, a mutant <laughs> bear of some type. Yeah. I'm yeah. grasping at straws, but you know, the point is, I, I want people to take away things happen and those things are real things. And, you know, our lead, our lead on that, um, we'll call it Bigfoot. We'll call it Sasquatch. Right. So everything is not a cut and dried explanation. You, you know, you go to the store, you look at a, a dozen eggs. OK, well, you know where those eggs came from. That's a cut and dried explanation. Right. Yeah. And you also have to be careful of, you know, back in kindergarten. When we all went to school, or those of us that did, um, played the telephone game where you whisper something to the little kids there next to you, and then it went around, and by the time it came back to you, it was absolutely nothing to do with anything you said. And you've got to be careful of that, too, because that's that happens in a lot of the situations, like you were explaining earlier, you know, the, uh, the uh, mythology of it. You know, there's, uh, one, one story is told that it was exactly what they saw. And told that to the next person. Well, then the next person embellished their little part on it. Maybe, uh, you know, hey, I was with this person when they saw this. So I know it for a true fact, you know, that it was six feet high or nine feet high and, you know, had hands and feet that, you know, the size of an elephant. And then the next person, he tells it, it goes, yeah, I was with them when they found it. And it snowballs from there. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah. you got to be careful of that, too. We're also saying before, you know, we've had all these. We have all this technology, all these cell phones, and all the years have gone by. Where are the bones? Yeah, you know, have, have they are they smart enough to bury them and and cover them or put them in a place where they'll never be found? You know, is there some cave somewhere that we don't know about or underground lava tube? You know, we're we gonna tear the whole world trying to find out what it is. Why don't we just enjoy what's there? Yeah, that's it. 